Amen. So we are welcome to the National Restoration Altar today. We actually have not been able to continue on our series of teaching on the pursuit of Jerry River, but we are going to do that. I was almost tempted yesterday you know, preparing something. Amen. I was tempted to pause this teaching, but no. I said, no, let's continue. But there are other burden, burden that God is burdened, that are pressing burden, that the Lord is bringing, but I later had to settle down for this to continue this teaching. Because it's also a burden issue. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, maybe after this, we're going to be looking at the issue of, uh, you know, two kinds of healings. There are two kinds of healing in the Bible. And the ignorance of these two kinds of healing have led a lot of people to, to preach a lot of error. And that is what led into what is called Scientology. The doctrines of Scientology and the Christian science. Their founders were both discovered later to be all cult people. And that is why they are part of what we call cult of Christianity or Christian cults. Scientology is a Christian cult. Uh, Christian science also is a Christian cult. And the back of Eddie, the founder, the father of uh, Scientology, was known to be a cultist. Amen. So let me not go into that. Let me continue our teaching. As time help, as God help us, we'll continue. Because ours is a teaching ministry. We are teaching priests and watchmen over the nation. So let's go to the scripture. We've looked, we've done so much in this series. This is the part five of the pursuit of genuine revival. Let's look at the uh, let's look at Second Chronicles chapter. 12 verse 14. We want to look at why does evil reigns? You know, we have been looking at two things together, the ongoing Bibleization and the pursuit of what? Of genuine revival. So why do evil reigns? Because you'll be, we'll look at, after this, we'll come to another scripture. we we'll look at, let's, no, let's look at the, before that one, let's look at the Hosea chapter 10, Verse 11 to 13. Then uh, we come back to 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 14. So that we can know why do evil reign. And then we'll we be looking at the post of revival. What does it mean to pursue revival? We'll be looking at that severally. Who is giving me that? Hosea chapter 10, verse 11 to 13. First reader, please. Who is reading? Yes. Yeah. Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to trash, so I'll put a yoke on her fair neck. I'll drive Ephraim, Judah must plow, and Jacob must break up the ground. So for yourselves, must rising, what? Must break up the ground. Must break up the ground, eh? So for yourselves, righteousness. Eh? Reap the fruit. What do you sow? Righteousness. What do you sow for yourselves? Righteousness. The Lord is saying, to sow to ourselves. What do we sow? Righteous. So that we reap what? Reap the fruit of unfailing love. So if you want to reap love, can you just use mercy? If you want to reap love, what do we sow? Righteousness. Righteousness. If you want to reap mercy, what do we sow? Righteousness. Righteousness. So we can reap love. You all use love. Can you just use mercy? That's not what you use. What is it you use? Reap mercy. mercy. So if we want to reap in mercy, what do we sow? We sow to ourselves, ourselves in what? We begin to sow to ourselves seeds of righteousness. And what do we reap? Mercy. God will not have mercy on us. God will not pour his love upon us. Because revival is not pouring of us, of the love and mercy of God. <laughs> Continue. And break up your unplowed ground. Break up your unplowed he just is the fallow ground. That is all. Uh -huh. For it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to what? Seek the Lord. What time are we? The time to 
it is time to what? To seek the Lord. So, the pursuit of genuine, remember his word, is the pursuit of God. It is a time to what? To sow to ourselves what? In righteousness. To pursue Jeremiah is to what? Is to what? Is to sow righteousness. <laughs> it's time to see the Lord ahead. Uh-huh. So that I woke up. And until he comes uh-huh. and showers righteousness on you. But you have planted wickedness. Uh-huh. You have reaped evil. We have not planted righteousness rather. Right what have we planted? Wickedness. Wickedness is planted everywhere. Uh-huh. For you have reaped evil. You when have... you plant wickedness, what do you reap? Evil. Did you have you seen? Follow your Bible. What do you all use? Uh-huh. You have eaten the fruit of deception because you have depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we have said severally when we began this teaching that what? That revival is what? Is the reign of what? Of what? Reign of what? Reign of what? He said, until the Lord comes. And what? So, when we are pursuing revival, what are we pursuing? We are pursuing that Jehovah should come. And what? And reign righteousness. Then there will be righteous leaders. Because the Bible says, when the righteous people rejoice. Then there will be righteous ministers of the gospel. The church becomes a righteous place. There will be righteous business partners. Righteous policemen. Just imagine we have righteous policemen in our nation. Yeah? I will have righteous politicians in our nation. I will have righteous judge and lawyers in our nation. I will have righteous businessmen. We have righteous civil servants, righteous neighbors. The pastors and righteous business was imagine that the, the, the power holding become righteous, the, the leaders become righteous. Bank, you know, you know, the banks are very dubious. Sending people double a lot, three a lot for one transaction. Small time, your money will be missing. You go to bank, they cannot trade, they, they will lie to you. They, they don't know. But you feel for you feel for because you feel for and they are delivered the judicial money from my account. Amen. The only reason why Nigeria is, is what it is today is because there what there are lack of what there is lack of righteousness in our nation. So the Bible says righteousness what exalt the nation, but sin is what sin is a reproach. Why is Nigeria the way it is? Because there is lack of what lack of righteousness from the least to the greatest. Righteousness is lacking. There was this uh, there was this play they were doing. A, a, a kind of a, a, a drama or I don't know, a movie. And then a man pretended to be blind. Amen. And then he was he was begging, please help me count my money, please. Help me count this money. Help me. There's somebody that came and counted. And I opened it. It was money was plenty money was there. And as they were counting, and the man and this, this woman was preaching. She was preaching. You saw that video now. She was preaching the gospel. She was just, she was just preaching. And after preaching, she met this man. And the way he was counting, he was packing it in their pocket with, uh, with the other person. Don't know it that there was camera. Later, the man now said, oh, yeah, put the one that you oh, yeah. He was surprised. He said, There are cameras watching you. That is what we have to do in Nigeria. Righteousness will exalt the nation. But sin is what? Sin is a reproach. And the righteous, the Bible says, our righteousness is what? It's like a fielded rag. So we need the Lord to come and what? And come and reign righteousness in our lives. He does what? He come and beat the light of his righteousness. He makes us to be righteous. We need to, we need to allow him, we need to what? Revival is when the Lord come to what? Because the Bible says, by strength shall not prevail. When the Lord come to what? To, to take over. To reign righteousness. 
It's not about self-righteousness. It's about the Lord reigning righteousness. It's about the reign of righteousness. The Lord calls him on high. And what does he do when he comes on high? What do your Bible say he do? He does. At the what? At the reign righteousness way. Go back to where you read now. Upon who? Upon who? Upon us. Upon us. So, God can walk. Can reign righteousness. Amen. He can come and walk and infuse us. That is the river. The river of righteousness. So, like we have said in several parts of this teaching, if there is no righteousness, there is no revival. Isaiah 32, for verse 50. He said then, the word. He said then, the word. The spirit of the Lord shall, Lord shall be poured upon us. Come on, her. He said, until, no, he said, until the spirit of God poured upon us. And the word. And the wilderness become a fruitful field. The food becoming a desert and becoming a forest. And then they shall what? They shall be righteousness. They shall be justice. They shall be peace. So my people shall join the peaceable habitation. So revival brings righteousness. So when we are crying for revival, we should know what they're crying for. What a land like Nigeria need this word is revival. The reign of righteousness from on high. But when the Lord comes to empower the people, to strengthen the people, so that it will no longer be by might, no longer be by power, but by my word, my spirit. Because it's the spirit, spirit of righteousness and the spirit of holiness. That's what the Bible says. Romans chapter 1 talks about the spirit of God being the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness. So let's see before we continue why evil reigns instead of righteousness. Why does evil reign? We say remember is a word. It's the word of righteousness. Abi? So why does evil reign in the life instead of righteousness? Let's see that piece. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 12 14. Why does evil reign in the land? Instead of righteousness. Yeah, they read from me. Remember is when righteousness reigns. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. He did what? Evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Who is, who, is, who is talking about here? Who is talking about? And it Obama. came to pass when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. Are you about him? And it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shisha, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord with 1,200 chariots and three Why did the man come against Israel? Horsemen. Because they have what? They have transgressed against who? The Lord. So the Lord suffered affliction. And that is the case of Nigeria today. Why are we having a problem? Because we have what? We have transgressed the Lord. So problem will always come to people who transgress against the law of the Lord, against the Lord. What do you see when people transgress against God? Problem comes. Uh-huh. And with 1,200 chariots and three score thousand horsemen, and the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt. Out of where? Egypt. Okay. The Lubims, the Sukims, and the Ethiopians, and he took the first city which pertained to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah. Shemaiah the prophet came to who? To Jeroboam now we eh? That were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, You have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. You have what? When people forsake God, what does God do? He leaves them to the hands. Have, you see why God have left in the hand of Fulani? I hope that you don't see Shaku took up Egypt. But it's what? Fulani Caliphate. The Sukoto Caliphate, God have left us in their hands. Why? Because we have what? What did they do? They have transgressed against the Lord. How does what? 
Read what your Bible says. Read what is given. They have what, eh? Because you have what? Is that what your Bible says? Your whole bishop says? Read that. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is read righteous. The verse. I wanted to read the verse before that, please. Now. I wanted to read over. Then, why did God send them Shishak? Then God came Shemaiah the prophet to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah uh -huh. that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. You have forsaken That is what I'm looking for now. And you read something that you cannot report, you read, and I'm not going to read it. You just read it and you have forgotten. I'm asking you have forgotten. He said, because you have what? You have forsaken me. Uh -huh. And therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shisha. Uh -huh. Why did God leave us in the hand of the full and caliphate in Nigeria? Why? Forsaken. We have forsaken the Lord. The church have forsaken God from tribe to tribe, from city to city, from state to state. We have forgotten God. We have forsaken the Lord. And he has what? He has left us the hands of Fulani Caliphate to deal with us. Uh -huh. Read for that. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to, she to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves. Therefore, I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. And my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shisha. Nevertheless, they shall be his servant, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shisha, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which instead of which king Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah things went well. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naaman, the Ammonite, thirteen. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. He did evil. Why do people do evil? Why? What did you say? Why do people do evil? Why do people do evil? I'm asking now, what did you say? Rehoboam did evil because what? Because he didn't prepare his heart to seek the Lord. Why do, why do evil take over a land? Because people what? They failed to prepare their heart to what? To seek the Lord. So evil, evil people do evil. And evil takes over the land. We are looking at, at, at what? At what? At the pursuit of genuine revival. And this morning I am looking at the subtopic that it is time to what? It is time to seek the Lord. It is time to walk. It is time to seek the Lord. Until he comes and what? And read righteousness. Because if people don't prepare their heart to see God, what, do, what happens? The people will continue the evil. Why did Jehovah continue the evil? And we can't, it was because he didn't prepare his heart. He didn't set his heart. Amen. So let's what? Let's set our heart. What's our message for the church? The message of God for the church in Nigeria is our word. It is time to what? It is time to seek the Lord. Because if people don't prepare their heart to seek God, what happens? They will do evil and evil will take over the land. Why is evil in the church? 
Why is there unrighteousness in the church? Why is Babylon taking over the church? Why? Why is the things that we look at the level of immorality taking over the church? Why? It's because we have not set our heart. Because we are not We have not set our heart. What the overture says in that place, verse, verse 14. But he was an evil king. Our hearts must be set to seek the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's go back to Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. So we should understand that the time we are now, it is time to what? To seek the Lord. The time to what? The time to seek the Lord. It's the time to sow to ourselves in righteousness. It is time to what? To plow our fallow ground. We all don't use verse 12. Use, is it plow or, or till? So why should we use till? Plow. It is a plowing time. It's a time to break up our fallow ground. Amen. It's the time to what? To break up our fallow ground. And what will happen break our fallow ground? And, and seek. The time to seek God. Until the Lord comes. Amen. So it's a very serious time. Let's look at the Isaiah 9 verse 30. No, let's look at the Isaiah 31. Verse 1, Isaiah 31, verse 1. Isaiah 31, verse 1. And then 51, verse 1 also. Isaiah 31, verse 1. You read from verse 1 to me, to 3. What to those uh-huh. who go down to Egypt for help, uh-huh. who rely on nurses. What to those who do what? Who go down, who to, go Egypt down to Egypt for help. Uh-huh. Who rely on horses? Uh-huh. Who trust in the multitude of their chariots uh-huh. and the great strength of their horsemen? Uh-huh. But do not look to the only one of Israel. They do not look to the only one of Israel. Uh-huh. Or seek help from the Lord. Or seek what? Help. Woe to them that would that go down to Egypt for help. But they do not what? They did not what? They did not what? They do not. Look to the only one of Israel, uh-huh. or seek help from the Lord. Uh-huh. Yet, he, yet he too is wise and can bring disaster. He does not take back his words. He will rise up against the house of the wicked, against those who help evil doers. But Egyptians are men. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. So the Bible says, "Cause is those who do what go down to Egypt for help." And trust the multitude of their word, of their, of their, of their, of their chariots. But they didn't look upon the Lord, nor scared from the Lord. The time when we are now is time to what? Is the time to seek help from the Lord, to set our heart to what? To seek help from the Lord. That is all the time we are in. Let me see, fifty-one, Isaiah fifty-one, verse one. Uh-huh. You who pursue righteousness uh-huh. and who seek the Lord. You who do what? Pursue righteousness. Pursue, pursue what? Righteousness. righteousness. What are we talking about here? The pursuit of what? So the pursuit of everybody is the what? Is the pursuit of what? Righteousness. Amen. Say, listen to the Lord. Who do you do? Who do you do what? Who pursue righteousness uh-huh. and who seek the Lord. Uh-huh. Look to the rock uh-huh. from which you were caught and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Continue. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all our ruins. He will make a, he will make a desert like Eden, a wasteland like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the sound of giving, uh-huh. of singing. Uh-huh. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Uh-huh. The Lord will go out from me. 
My justice will become a light to the nation. My righteousness draws near speedily. Hallelujah. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. Yeah, but let's stop there. You can read it one later. Are you hearing that? Those words. Isaiah 51 verse 1. Who pursue righteousness? So, brethren, what time is it? Time to what? To pursue righteousness. It's time to what? It's time to pursue righteousness. It's time to seek the Lord. Pursue righteousness and what? What do you all say? What type of writing are writing? Right, time to do what? To pursue righteousness and do what? And seek the Lord. This is the time. It is time to what? To pursue righteousness. The pursuit of Jeremiah is the word, is the pursuit of righteousness. It's time to seek the Lord. Pursue righteousness. Then look at Isaiah chapter 9, 13. Can somebody give me Psalm 9 also? And then if you Psalm 9, Psalm 9, 34, Psalm 9, verse 34. Isaiah 9, 13. But if people have not Struck them. Mm. No, they sought the Lord Almighty. They are good. They are what? Sought the Lord. Have you finished reading this? Yes. Let me see for another version. They told not, not unto him that smited them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Brethren, this is time to what? To seek the Lord of hosts. The time we have in Nigeria, it is time to what? We say we are looking at the subtopic, it is time to what? To seek the Lord. It's the time. So that he can what? He can come and what? And reign righteousness. Because when people seek God, what does he do? He brings he reign righteousness. When people sow to what? When people break up their fallow ground. Time to break up our fallow ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at the. Uh, have, we, have we seen some, some verse 9? 9 I say verse 10. Who's 34? Verse 10. Those who your name will trust in you. Uh -huh. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek him. God has never forsaken those who seek him. So, brother, it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to what? 34 verse 4. Psalm 34 verse, verse 10. Psalm 34 verse 10. And then Psalm 63. Verse 1 to 3. Psalm 34, verse 10, and Psalm 63, verse 1. The lions may grow, we cannot grow. Uh -huh. 34, seek. verse 10. Yes. Okay. The lions may grow, we cannot grow. Uh -huh. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Yes. Are you about those who do? Seek the Lord. Read for that. Is that all? That's 10. Read for that now. Come, my children, listen to me. Uh -huh. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and only from speaking lies. Okay, praise the Lord. Bible says, those who seek the Lord, what do they do? What happened to them? They what happened to them? They live long. No? They, they, lack, no they lack no good things. You are not following you now. Those who do what? Who seek the Lord? What happened to them? No, they lack no they good, lack good, good, good things. They will not lack good leadership. They will not lack good leaders. They will not lack food. They will not lack safety. They will not lack peace. Amen. Friends, they will not lack good things. Those who seek the Lord. And the word of God cannot be broken. Amen. You now be wondering what is happening to us. But we look so religious in Nigeria. Yes. I'll tell you the irony of this country. We look how so religious, but <laughs> if I tell you, you will not understand. We are not actually seeking God. We are not actually what? Seeking the Lord. I'll tell you what we have been seeking. Amen. Do I tell you what we are seeking? Yes. 
Let's go to Ezra chapter 9, verse 12. We have been we have been seeking wealth. We have been seeking what are we seeking? Wealth. We have been seeking wealth. We are not be seeking God. Ezra 9 verse 12. Therefore, uh-huh. do not give your daughters in marriage to their sons, uh-huh. or take their daughters for your sons. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them at any time, that it may be strong and eat the good things of the land, and leave it to your children as an everlasting inheritance. Read from Jesus for me. For that matter. Now, therefore, do uh-huh. not your daughters unto their sons. Uh-huh. Neither take their daughters unto your sons, uh-huh. nor seek the peace. They are peace or now, they are wet forever. Now, now, listen, listen. We are going somewhere. Not seek their words. They are peace. That is, they are wealth that forever. Is, now, you know, they don't seek to be friends with them. They are friendship. That is what we're talking about. They are peace. They're talking about what? to be mixed up with them, to, to be at peace with them, to be smiling, you know, to be living as friends. You all say your friendship. I mean, what do you all say? Your daughters marry to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons. Do not seek a treaty of friendship with them. Do not seek friendship with them. And all, no, they are what? No, no, they are well. They are well forever. What has been happening that we are just a people are what? We are just seeking for what? Wealth and what? And good things of this life. That's what we are seeking. You're not be seeking the Lord. We are be seeking wealth, and that is why go and check what churches are the, are the churches that are populated today that are growing very well. Churches that talk about wealth, financial prosperity churches, material prosperity churches. These are churches that are booming today because we are a people who seek what we seek wealth. We are not seeking the Lord. We are seeking wealth. We are seeking one. We are seeking approval of men of this world. And that is why every look go and check now. Any Christian now that the child wants to marry. The, the daughter wants to marry. They want him to marry a man that has money. Not a missionary that is working for God. Do you know why? We're not seeking God. We're not seeking the Lord. We're seeking for things. Tell me now. Why 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 did you uh, 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 Adeboye's son marry Adeboye daughter marry a missionary that is in Borodo State. In one village in Borodo State, in Puruka. Eh? Why did Adeboye's son marry a missionary in Puruka in Borodo State? Why did Oyedepo Oyedepo daughter go and marry one, one missionary that is in a, inside, inside one village in Sokoto State? Are you understand what I'm talking about here? Why did Kumuyi daughter, daughter go and marry one, 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 one missionary that is where? That is inside one village in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in Tapabelewa, in, in Bochi State. One interior missionary. Why? Amen. These are the indication, indications or indicators that there is something wrong with our seeking for God. There is something wrong somewhere. There's something wrong somewhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And there is a call for us in what? In the cost of seeking, pursuing general. There's a call. There is what? There is a call upon us in our quest for what? For genuine revival. There is a call. Until we answer this call, we cannot see, we cannot see genuine revival. Hallelujah. We cannot what? We cannot see genuine revival. Hallelujah. Amen. We can't see it. Let's see Ezra chapter 6, verse 21. The same Ezra chapter 9 also talked about it, but I want us to start from. Chapter 6, verse 21. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it, together with all the with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their gentle neighbors. Are you about they are born? All who are born who have separated themselves. There is a call for separation. There is what? There is a call for separation. 
if we are going to have genuine revival, amen, one of the things the call must answer is what? Is the call for separation. Because our churches have been Babylonized. Our churches have what? Been Babylonized. Our land everywhere is Babylonized. The people that will experience genuine revival, that will encounter it, must be separated. And you have to understand this from Acts chapter 2. Jesus was the, one of the greatest things that Jesus did before, he, before his death and resurrection was what? Was to separate the people unto himself. He called them Peter. All of them was called with a call from their various occupations and various, and various locations. He called them. They were they called out. Ecclesia. The church. God called people. The call and chosen people. We cannot be living our life like every other Christian and, and what? And partake of what? In bringing revival. No! The priest that must bring the ark back must be sanctified. And, it, and, and, and to get sanctified, you must answer the call to separation. We can't live a life anyhow. You can't be living like other pastors and other Christians and bring revival. You no, you can't you can't be part of this labor. If you are going to be part of those people that will bring back the ark of God to Nigeria, or that will bring the back to Nigeria, you must what? You must be what? You must answer the call to what? The call to separation. Uh, read for that, you didn't finish it. We are still there. Ezra chapter 6, we are still there. Uh-huh. From the unclean practices of their gentiles. Brethren, there, are so, there is so much unclean practices in our nation, between the church. Like we saw, we saw in from Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah 34, I mean 44. And also from Jeremiah chapter, chapter 7, and then Ezekiel uh, 8, from verse, uh, I think from verse 14. So much word. Feel the There is so much word. Feel the What do you want? So much words. What do you all use? Wonder. What do you all use? What do you all use? They so use feel the They separated their sex or what? For what? They are unclean gentle. They are unclean practices of their gentle neighbors. They they what? They are clean practices. In order to seek the Lord. Amen. In order to what? In order to seek the Lord. Amen. So, if we are going to seek the Lord so that the Lord can come and reign righteousness, we must what? We must separate them. Who separated them? Read for that. For that, let me see your version. Wonder. Who separated them? Then the Senate. Okay. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, mm-hmm. and by the others in the land who had turned from their immoral customs. Who have turned from where? Their immoral customs. They have turned from their immo- there, there is an immoral custom in our land. There is an immoral custom where? In the church. The people that are going to bring revival to our nation must be among those of who are born. Who have said, they have what? They have done what? What is it they have done? They have turned from their immoral customs. They have turned. There are so many immoral customs going on today in, our, in, 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 in the Christianity and in the land. So if we want to pursue genuine revival, if we want to, if we are ready to what? To sow in righteousness. Or we are ready to see revival. Amen. If we are ready to see God reign his righteousness upon our land and upon ourselves, we must what? We must sow in righteousness. We must what? We must till, we must plow our fallow ground. They had what? They had separated themselves from the moral cause of To worship the Lord, the God of Israel. To worship the Lord, the God of Israel. 
Let me see from the version. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the fitness of the hidden of the land. They have to separated seek the Lord God of Israel. They have separated themselves from the filthiness of the people of the land. There are so many hidden in churches today, hidden pastors, hidden church members, hidden people everywhere. Amen. So if we are going to be partaker of this revival, amen, we must answer the call to what? The call to separation. Because the church as this now has been Babylonized. Just like what happened to, to the temple before the, before the temple was destroyed. Is it chapter 8? They have started worshipping Baal and, and Ashtaroth and Molech. Women were baking cake to the queen of heaven and pouring drink off into her, which was what? Which was the queen of heaven, which is what, called what? Uh, Easter or what? Or, Semi, or, or Semiramis. The men were worshiping the sun, which was what? Amen. What, what do you say is the, is the sun? The sun God? No? Nimrod. And who says Tammuz? Tammuz is what? Tammuz is, uh, is, the, is the child of Semiramis. There was an infiltration. And it was on the account of this situation that God was angry and destroyed the temple. As we saw in Ezekiel chapter, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse, verse, verse 14. Ezekiel 8, 14. That one. When you read from verse 10 down to the end. And we saw in, 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 in Jeremiah 44. And Jeremiah chapter 7. Hallelujah. So, the, if we are going to see revival. So, in, so, when the Lord is talking about what? Breaking up your fallow ground. We are talking about. We are reading from the book. We are, we are doing a study. A study from what? From the book, the sixteen uh, steps to what? To collapse the caliphate and restore a nation. And we're looking at the the engaging the force of what? Of ideological what? Ideological campaign. Ideological partition in what? In winning the ongoing battle. We're looking at that. And we and we began to state what. The national restoration altar, what we stand for in this in this movement. It's an ideological warfare. Amen. It's an ideological campaign. Hallelujah. So the fallow ground must be broken. Amen. Amen. And what do we mean by that? The people must what? The people must turn away for what? From the custom of the land. The people must be. The people must answer the call to separation. Hallelujah. We cannot continue in the defilement and pollution of the land and think that we can have we can't have genuine revival. No, we can't have it. So much has happened. Amen. So there is a call to separation from this Babylon church. If we are going to have revival, there is what? The remnant, the remnant that will bring revival must what? They must answer the call to separation from these Babylon churches. Most of churches have become Babylon. And that is why it is not time to. If somebody say, yeah, hey, you need to, people, you, know, you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to come together. You need to unite. Unite with who? Unite with Babylon. Can you unite with those? This, we must be careful now. It's not time to miss up anyhow. Because there is a call that is going on. The call is what? Come out from among her and be what? And be separate. Touch not the unclean. For the kings of the earth, they are already drunk with the abundance of our delicacy. They are drunk with our wine. And we cannot afford to join them to drink that wine and think we have no way. Jesus was able to, at the, at the long run, had 120 men who were separated. And upon them, revival came. It's not meant for everybody. It starts with a few before it diffused to others. We are talking about what? The post of what? Of genuine revival. 
There is a call to answer. Revelation chapter 18, Revelation chapter 17 tells us about the call. Isaiah 51, 52. Isaiah 50 and 51 tells us about the call. I mean, Jeremiah chapter 51, 50 and 51 tells us about this call. The call to come out from among her and be separate. Second Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18 tells us about this call to separation. We cannot have another example to answer this call. The feebleness is so much. The church has been Babylonized greatly. Hallelujah. Let's see one or two scripture more so that we can wind up for today. Hallelujah. Let's see what the Bible says. It's going to Chronicles. Amen. So this time we are is the time to answer the call to the time to seek the Lord. The time to pursue the right word. It's time to answer the call to separation. That is what I said about Wanabi. I said it's time to answer the call to separation. The time to come out from among her, be separate. Because there is so much that is happening. Amen. So when the Lord is talking about it, it is time, He say, He say, He say, till your fallow ground. That is what He's talking about here. We must till our fallow ground. We must break loose. Amen. We have to go at that. We have to go up. Go about. So to He says, so, so to yourself in righteousness. This is time to so to ourselves in righteousness. So how do we sow? Sowing the seed of the word. To people, just like what we saw in First Samuel chapter seven, what Samuel did to the people, he said, "Where for? Turn away from worshiping of other gods." And, turned, and the Bible said, "The people now what? They till their fallow ground. How they till their fallow ground? They brought their idols and 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 destroy it, and they turned to the Lord. That is what we're talking about. Here. If we don't do this, we cannot see the Bible. They confess their sins. They Samuel judged them from for morning till night. They confess their sins. That is what till their fallow grounds." We can't cover sin up and expect it. It will not come. We can't continue to live in sin and expect it. It can't come. Let's see. Number two thing. It is also a time to, to answer. It is time to enter the covenant of holiness. It is time to enter the time to seek the Lord. The time of revival. We say it is time to seek the Lord. Yeah, and this time is the time to what? The time to enter the covenant of holiness. Second Chronicles 15. Then look at verse 12 to 13. Second Chronicles 15, 12 to 13. Second Chronicles. Now fast, fast, fast read that. So now we can wind up fast. Who is reading? People are too slow in reading now. Why are you too slow in reading? They entered into a covenant. They entered into the world. Brethren, this is time to enter into covenant. Eh? To seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. The God of their fathers. There must, we, must, we must enter into a covenant to what? To seek the Lord. It is time to enter covenant to seek the Lord. We must enter a covenant to seek the Lord. You read for me and drop your notebook. I read for me. I stop writing and, and, and read. How long you carry your Bible and read? Oh, yeah. Drop the notes, those notes. Uh-huh. The God of their fathers, with all their hearts and soul. With all their words. Brethren, when we're talking about pursuing Jehovah, it's time to what? To enter covenant with what? With all our words. Our hearts, hearts are to what? To what? To seek the Lord. Uh-huh. The God of their fathers, uh-huh. with all their hearts and soul. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, was be put to death, whether small or great, man or woman. That is verse 13. Amen. So it is time for us to enter into a covenant to seek the Lord. It's not, it is not time to look for to look for wealth. It's not time to look for friendship with the world. Yeah. Bible says for all that world that separated themselves. In Ezra chapter 9, we read chapter 6. They did what? They separated their it is time for us to separate themselves to seeking the Lord. It's not time to seek friendship with the world. As a matter of fact, it is time to enter into a covenant. A covenant to seek the Lord with all their heart. And I we call that later, you understand from this from, from you understand from, 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 from our book, 
the sixth step to uh, the sixth step to collapse the caliphate and restore nation that one that that covenant is called the covenant of holiness. When you read the covenant of that covenant, you read the whole of it. It's actually called the covenant of what? holiness. It's, it's time to enter into the covenant to seek the Lord. No more sin. Amen. No more what? No more no 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 more worship of no more no more immoral dressing. No more worldliness. Amen. No more abortion and uh, abortion. No more sexual immorality. No more divorce and remarry. It should be serious as that. Amen. No more gossip. No more lying and stealing and cheating. No more defraudment. No more false prophets. False teachers. Bellop and Jezebel and Nicolaita. No more eternal security message. We must be serious. Hallelujah. Amen. God, it's not time to jump up and eh, eh, Bible say we should be united. Well, you are, you are united. Talking about what you are talking about here now. Unity for what? Unite with who? Unite with prostitutes. And that is how they continue to unite with them and then they began to give their children to the people of the land for what? In marriage. And before you know, Solomon went and started carrying wife from every, every part of the world. I don't know with several hundred queens. I, 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 I mean, I mean, a princesses and a queen in a, in a princesses in a house. And they misled Solomon. They drew the heart of Solomon away from the Lord. And you that you are children of pastor, and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you, you believe in the holiness. So what do you have to do with children of children who wear trousers? We let us wear trousers. What do you have with them? What friendship? What concern with them? What? Them? And you go to school, your best friend is a man, is a lady that wears trousers, and you don't wear trousers. The one who used to make up, and you don't make up. You are you, you, you are what? You are, you are already polluting yourself. How can how can darkness and light become be, become partners, become friends? Can it is it possible? It's not possible. Amen. Amen. So it's a very serious time. There is Babylonization everywhere. We must be careful. You can't live your life anyhow this time. It's risky to live your life anyhow now. You must choose your association. Somebody was telling me, uh, I, I wanted me to join the particular group. I said, no, I'm very careful now. Talk to our sister. I wanted me to join the, uh, some, uh, some, a, a particular group. I said, no, it's not now. Eh, it's not now. Eh, it used to be before I used to join. No, eh, now I am careful to join people. To join any group, eh, 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 this, eh, this group, eh, this group, it, 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 that is not it. Eh, the Bible says we should be united. Which unity are you talking about? The unity of Torah of Babel, the unity of Nimrod. Which unity are you talking about here? Hey, they are Christian brother. Which Christian brother are you talking about? What, what do they stand for? I want to know what they stand for first. Do they believe in total holiness? What is their righteousness stand? What is their what is their stand in terms of righteousness and morality? I want to know their moral stand first. Amen. Because what are we seeking for? We are seeking for what are we pursuing? We are pursuing not just anything. We are pursuing what are we pursuing? Genu what we want now is what is genuine revival, not any kind of revival. No, genuine revival. And we know that there is no way to eat than to trust and obey. There is no way to eat that to what? Than to sow in what? Than to sow to ourselves in righteousness and to reap in mercy. There is no way that for us to what? To till our fallow ground. There is no way we must till our fallow ground. We can't. We must till our fallow ground if we want God to come and what? And read righteousness. What must we do on our own self? We must what? What must we do? We must steal our fallow ground. We must expose our iniquity. We must renounce our sins, our worldly lifestyles, our immoral lifestyle must be renounced. Amen. Amen. So there is work to be done. And we must not we must not confuse what they are looking for. 
Let's see one other point. Point number three now, number four. I said it is time to it is time to what? to enter the world, the covenant of of world, the covenant of holiness. Then we have said it is time to what? it is time to answer the call to what? the call to separation. Amen. The call to what? to separation. Because there is much much filthiness everywhere. There is much filthiness. We have said that before, Nabi. The church has been Babylonized. So at the call of God, uh, 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 Revelation chapter 8, verse 4, is what is come out from among, her, among them and be separate. God is calling us out of the Babylon church to seek it for what? Seek it for what? Genuine revival. Brethren, until you answer the call to, to separation, you cannot seek genuine revival. You'll be seeking fake revival. You'll be, you'll be following them and be thinking what's happening. It's not revival that is happening. I've seen that before. Amen. Are we there with me? So it is time to set. This time is the time to set our heart and our soul to seek the Lord. Let's look at Second First Chronicles twelve. I mean twenty two. Twenty two nineteen. First Chronicles twenty two nineteen. Fast, fast, fast. First one to tweet. I see you read it now. Don't wait for any other person. He said, "Do hey, read again." Hey. Now set your heart and your brethren. Soul. What should we do now? What do we do now? Set your heart and your soul. Lord your God. To seek the Lord your God. Uh-huh. Arise therefore and build thee the sanctuary of the Lord God. Uh-huh. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessel of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. Come, what do you do? Come, do what? Set what? Set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Uh-huh. Arise therefore and do thee the sanctuary of the Lord God. So bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the Amen. So the this Lord. is now is the time to work, to seek the Lord, to set our world, our hearts and our soul to seek the Lord. That is the time. This is the time to seek God with what? Our heart and our soul. To build the world. To build a temple for him, a sanctuary for him, to bring back the covenant, the ark of the Lord, to the sanctuary of the Lord. We talk about revival. Amen. Amen. Let's see if at the not number six five or so. I don't know which point I am now. Amen. Let's look at the. So it is time. To set the Lord. Amen. I mean, it's time to seek the strength of the Lord and the face of the Lord. First Chronicles 16, 10. 10 to 11. First Chronicles 16 to 11. I think we'll stop at that point. And then you can also read uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 later. Second Chronicles 20, verse 1. And then First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 1, verse 10 to 11. Which one have you seen? 21. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Exalt in his holy name. Uh-huh. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Search for that what? Is 11. It for is time Lord. to search for the Lord. And for his the post to revise what is what is to search for what for the Lord and, and the Lord's strength. strength. Continually seek Him. Continually seeking the Lord. Uh-huh. Remember the wonders He has performed, His miracles and the rulings. Have you done verse twelve? Yes, that's verse twelve. So now is the time to what continually search 
pursue, seek for the Lord at all. And for his strength. And for his and seek his face. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. Stop there. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also. That the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to, be, to battle. Mm-hmm. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There come a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in, in Hazazotama, which is Engadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and, and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to seek help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the Let's congregation. Talk, praise the Lord. They came to what? seek the Lord. They had troubles. And what did they do in their trouble time? They came to seek the Lord. So what do we do at this moment of trouble in our nation? What do we do? It's time to seek the Lord. Amen. It's time to what? To seek the Lord. And I'm confident that as we seek the Lord, the Lord himself will what? We come. Amen. Don't forget our scripture. Let's go back to our last scripture. Where we started from. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. It is time to seek the Lord until he comes. Chapter 12 of Hosea 10. Until he comes and reign righteousness. Until he comes. Remember his word. Remember his reign of righteousness. Until the Lord comes. So the Lord is going to come. To do what? To reign righteousness upon us. From on high. So that is what we are looking for. We are looking for. What are we looking for? The, is a pursuit of what? Of the Lord. Seeking the Lord. That is pursuit of the Lord. So that the Lord can come and what? And reign righteousness. And if God is going to come and read righteousness, we must what? We must sow to ourselves in righteousness. We must what? We must break up our fallow ground. We must seek the Lord until He comes. The Lord is going to come and read righteousness. And it shall be well with our land in the name of Jesus. Let's go and I begin to praise the Lord. I begin to bless the Lord. Lord, give us the grace to seek you. The grace to seek you. Kala. The Lord bless you. I remain your brother, Moses or George Enemy God Special, the coordinator of National Restoration Program and National Emergency Salvation Projects. God bless you as you listen and forward and subscribe also so that you can continue to get uh, further messages. God bless you. We trust the Lord that uh, the Lord will come down and reign righteousness in our nation, Nigeria, and a nation like other nations of the earth shall be turned around in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Shalom, Maranatha. And then, peradventure, you want to contact us. Our contact is 080-3392-1213. Let me take it again. 080-3392-1213. And then, if you're outside Nigeria, you can add our code. Plus 234 is the Nigerian code. Shalom, Maranatha, Maranatha.